Hello Jovi family. Today I'm changing the water of this fish pond. That's why you can visibly see all the catfish. As I was uh, standing by the fish pond, I started seeing the fish in a different perspective. Today's video, I'm going to talk about the challenges of catfish farming. Okay? But before I go ahead with that, I want to thank you for supporting this channel. I thank you very much to all the new subscribers, the fans, friends, everybody giving us likes, comments. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your kindness, your time, taking out all your preferable time to come and watch us. Thank you very much. All right then. Let's talk about these challenges. Most of you love to start fish farming, but before you start fish farming, there are a few things you need to know. There is no point of starting this project if it's not going to make you money but make you a loss. Unless you're doing it as a hobby or you're just doing it to grow food in your backyard, that's different. I'm talking about you individuals, these particular people who want to make money or create another extra income. If you're going to create multiple streams of income and you want the income to be fish farming, to be one of them, you need to pre-plan. You need to project ahead. You need to plan before even the fish is growing. One thing I want to talk about to you today is marketing your fish. Okay? You need to start before even the, the fish are mature to look for the market, ready market for people interested in buying this merchandise, okay? You can start in the marketplace, see what type of fish people are selling. How often do you find catfish, farm, uh, catfish buyers? Is there a particular point within your area that is interested in buying or dealing with fish that is catfish f um, produce, okay? You need to start early. Reason being that you may find that you're the only one providing this in your area. Or you may find you have other farmers who are doing it within your area. So there's competition for this particular market access. What I say is hold on to your fish before they are mature and find out what exactly is happening. Are you going to sell them as um, uh, fingerlings? Are you going to sell them at one kilogram? What are you planning to do? Don't just waste your time, resources, without planning ahead, okay? My advice is this. Start searching for people who will be buying this fish, okay? What is their price for a kilo, for example? How many do they need? Okay? Then there is also finding alternative opportunities. For example, you could smoke this fish, your catfish, that preserves it longer and then it gives you time to sell to um, a wider market without worrying about them going off or going into uh, extra feeding because the actual expense in this particular field is the feed if you can hold on to your fish without going into too much expense with feeding you're good to go remember the gap between the selling time and the growing time is very short if you realize you're so many farmers in the area doing catfish farming then you have to play a different ball game for example are you going to wait until uh, there is scarcity then you sell but if that is the case how are you planning to feed them okay if everybody is selling the fresh one how about looking into the smoked ones how is that particular market? Does it start a bit earlier before the fish are one kilogram? Or even after one kilogram, you can still make a profit. Most of you can still do export. Find out if you can export your fish abroad. Yes, people smoke it and, and ship it. So there is still more time to make this. If you buy yourself time by starting when you are just having fingerlings or very young fish don't wait until maybe next week they are ready and then start looking for the market 
that way you'll be selling desperately because remember they are entering into your feed budget and besides the people selling buying from you may end up taking an opportunity because they know you're desperate whereas if you pre-plan you end up getting your good price for your hard work okay those are things i want you to think about before you venture into this particular project okay dear joving friends let's go to the next challenge if you're not aware that there is need for you to have a good supply of water clean water okay most of us are thinking of catfish but we forget that we need a good source of water supply why I call this a challenge is you will find that as the fish grow, you will need to change their water in this pond. Remember, we've created an artificial water body for this particular fish. You will need to change it almost every other day as they grow. Initially, when they are still fingerlings, that's very small. You can do it um, after every three days. As they grow, you go after every four days. My dear, as these fish grow to almost their full size that you're targeted, they will be needing water almost every other day. Reason being that if you don't change this water, this fish will not feed properly. Two, the stench, oh my God, the smell of the water after three days is enough to knock you out so you change it without anybody pushing you to change it. I'm asking you if you're going to venture in this and it's in your backyard, you will not be able to sit in your sitting room or close to this pond if you've not changed the water properly. So prepare your water supply. Are you going to use tanks? Are you going to use rainwater? Are you going to use the pump? Remember, if you're using a pump, you will need electricity. That is money. Okay? If you're going to use rainwater, it doesn't rain every day in Africa. <laughs> Remember, you're also using it for domestic use. So the water is a real biggie here. You need to prepare yourself in terms of how are you going to supply this water to keep your fish growing faster and also prevent the smell and also allow them to feed properly. That is challenge number two. Remember to plan for the water source and supply. If you give these fish rubbish water, they will die. You would have wasted your money to invest in it. If you give them water that they will not sustain, they will die. The other thing, if you don't change your water regularly, they will not feed properly, meaning you'll be wasting your feed. You'll be taking longer to have this fish reach mat maturity, meaning you'll be having to pay for more feed to keep this fish in the pond. You know what I mean? We are after having a good produce, a quick and fast return, but healthy fish. So if you're going to make money, you need to think about your cost of feed, your cost of electricity if you're using pumps, your cost of water if you're going to buy it. Some of you are stubborn, you may end up buying the water initially thinking to okay. But remember, you're going to keep this fish about six to seven months or so before you even try to start making money out of it. If you don't do that, they will get stunted, they will not grow, and then you're paying for more feed. Guys, think about your water source. And finally, just to let you know, dear friends, you will need to calm down in terms of budgeting for food. Fish feed is very expensive, okay? There are times you find that the particular size you want is not there, but you cannot starve your fish. You go for maybe a smaller size, which is not even enough for your feed, so you give them more, isn't it? But then the price for the feed till you sell those fish is not a joke. So my advice in terms of that is, if you can, work towards learning. Let somebody who is well qualified in this area teach you how to make your own feed. However expensive it is, it will be cheaper in the long run because, to be honest, true for true, it is expensive to feed catfish or fish in the backyard. You need to learn how to make the feed it yourself. Reason being that it cuts into everything you do. You need to pay for the feed. But if you're making it, 
you would reasonably cut down the cost maybe. I'm thinking the best way is to learn how to make the feed yourself by investing whatever price it is for somebody well-trained to teach you how to do it. One thing I know will be expensive is the machine itself. The other thing, the sources, uh, with the resources, for example, the cornstarch, the blood, the this, those are easy to find locally. But the machine, why it is expensive initially to buy it is expensive and to run it. Are you doing a manual machine? Are you going to get a diesel one? Or are you going to get an electrical one? Depending on which quality you've cho chosen, that's where your budget will be. So please, much as you may end up making the feed yourself to cut the cost, remember the cost of running the fish feed machine itself could run your pocket dry. So please, are you doing a, a manual one? A petrol one or electrical one that's for you to decide i love you so much thank you so much for watching my channel for supporting us guys i would say whatever the cost take your time to do research and listen there's no rush nobody's rushing you take your time because if one corner of these challenges hooks you you end up with a loss I love you so much. Until next time, it's me, Jacqueline from Jovin. Thank you. If you've not subscribed, please do so. Click on the red button. Click on the notification bell such that you're notified each time you release a video. In the meantime, I would say I love you and good luck. Bye-bye. Please don't hesitate to contact me on 024-700-1739. The number is 024-700-1739. Thank you for watching. I wish you the best in your adventure and whatever you decide. Now at least you have reasonable information on what may challenge you. Okay. I hope this answers your questions to those who ask me about feeding, running costs, marketing and in general how it would be.